in this section we will go to the details of how we can use some of the capabilities in apache spark for distributing your model training batch based inference etc so before starting let's look at one of the examples where we created all the environment variables and we connected to the local machine where the spark is running and you get the spark context and then you import the relevant PySpark classes and convert a pandas data frame into a spark data frame which is very much needed because pandas data frame is python specific and it is not distributed across the nodes the very purpose of using spark is for distributing the data and the machine learning processing into a number of worker nodes for that pandas data frame as it is if you are using it's not possible that's the reason we are converting that pandas data frame into a spark data frame provided arrow is enabled and then when you print you get the spark data frame and after that you apply the machine learning algorithms that are available in PySpark. So from here onwards, you are using the methods and the feature engineering aspects as well as the model building that are available from PySpark. And you continue, create your model, predict. That's it. The big question is now, hey, I'm not familiar with PySpark ML methods, one important point. The second, the methods and the feature engineering and the models that are available in Spark is not matured as that of Python machine learning libraries because Python is well known for the diverse set of tools like scikit-learn, TensorFlow, etc., etc., that are available and widely used in the machine learning world far better than that of the Spark based machine learning. PySpark ML algorithms and the facilities available. So you might have written a scikit-learn code. Will you be able to use this approach that you are seeing here in line on line three for converting your code into something that can be invoked by scikit-learn or can we use that scikit-learn on this particular line like pyspark.ml.scikit-learn? That's not possible because if you look at the PySpark API, they have come up with vanilla machine learning libraries and feature engineering tools which are not prominent and famous as that of these Python libraries. So the question now is how can you use your existing libraries that are used in Python and how can we port it into a Spark cluster for machine learning? Great, that's where the Pandas or PySpark UDFs or user defined functions are coming in. So let me just give you an overview of 
how python works on a spark cluster so if you look at this diagram this is the spark context that we have created and as you all know on the top of the program we have imported the py4j libraries from the spark cluster right and we get a spark context and so far we are in python the white boxes here represents python and the blue boxes are standing for jvm and when you are submitting the code internally first it will convert it into a java based context using py4j library and then will be submitted into the spark cluster if it is local machine or is a remote spark cluster and then each worker is going to execute your python code this is how the pandas udf works so if you have written your scikit-learn libraries then that particular code is going to get executed on each worker for every task but the whole issue is there is a lot of time getting spent for converting the java based spark data frames into python and that's where apache arrow comes in and internally arrow will be used in order to convert it into a corresponding pandas data frame or pandas data frame back to a spark data frame they have made it very efficient because earlier the driver program on your spark cluster was having the complete responsibility of collecting the entire data and then doing the processing which was causing a lot of memory issues and it was a time consuming operation your whole idea of distribution was not perfect in that architecture so here what we are doing is we are converting that into an in-memory very fast convertible form called arrow and then we are going to use the python udfs to execute from each worker node on the chunk of data that is getting distributed so that we get high parallelism and you can refer to the documentation on the PySpark usage guide where you will see some of the examples and uh, as you have seen you have to install PyArrow and make sure that your program contains arrow based execution enabled equal to true. I faced a lot of problems when we are doing the PyArrow installation. Do not use Conda install PyArrow. Instead, use pip install PyArrow. And it is always better to go with version 0.8.0. .0. So if you look at my Anaconda prompt, you will see that I am doing the installation as shown in this particular line the pip install pyarrow 0.8.0 .0. also i faced some issue for the numpy and scipy packages for that i used conda first and it was giving some issues so i removed it as conda remove scipy and numpy and used the pip install numpy and pip install scipy so please remember pip install scipy pip install numpy and pip install pi arrow double equals 0 0.8.0 so that you are specifying the version and i'm running this anaconda navigator on administrator privileges and uh, whenever you are starting your spark cluster as explained earlier you make sure that your spark cluster is also started with administrative privileges those are the basic steps that are needed for doing any code with pyspark udf 
Now let us look into the code. This is an example where we will show some of the features. And I have written the comment on the top that do not use Conda install for NumPy, SciPy and PyArrow. Instead use pip install. First we have the common imports that we have seen. And then we are creating a job lib. But those who are familiar with the Python job lib is a fantastic library to create the pickle files and do a dump of those files onto a particular directory so that you can load back that models. And the whole aspect of this particular code is to show you how you can use the PySpark UDFs with your standard Python libraries to create models and train them on a Spark cluster. And as you can see here, we are having the sklearn linear model and we are using linear regression and the other imports as usual. Then we are creating some sample data and intentionally we are creating two sets of data one is called a data frame 1 and another is called a data frame 2. And to make sure that there are some noise we are adding, we are taking a 2.5 times factor for the noise here and 3 point times factor here for the noise so that our sample data is having a little bit of noise but it is a completely linear relationship. And then we are converting that data frame in pandas. Remember, we have not yet started Spark at all. We are using the pandas data frame and then writing to CSV in a compressed format. So let's start executing it. First, I will go ahead with this one and then this one and then this one and then this one so that now you have got a directory called the synthetic data with the two files df1 and df2 and let's look at the directory you can see synthetic data and uh, you have got two files there df1.csv which is compressed and df2.csv which is compressed again no other files please note that because later we will see some more files here and now coming back to our code you might be asking what is the reason why we are compressing it into two data frames? This is to show you the parallelism. In Spark, whenever you are storing the data, the data is getting distributed, right? And the data is getting distributed into many nodes. We don't want an infinite number of partitions created across the nodes so that an infinite number of parallel processing will happen depending upon the number of partitions. Instead, we want to limit it so that two parallel executions are happening on my data. If I'm not compressing it, it will be the liberty of the Spark execution engine to decide how many partitions are needed. Of course, it will be using 128 MB chunks, but here by compressing it, I am restricting to create two partitions. Why? Because we have got two different files. And since it is compressed, the partition will be read at a time once. If it is not compressed, then Spark might distribute that data frame. Right? And now, as usual, we are going to connect to the Spark cluster. As you have seen here, my master and my worker node are running um, already with the administrative privileges and we will go ahead and connect to that Spark cluster. Remember, Arrow is enabled and uh, uh, to, to, to make sure that there are no errors when you are getting Arrow enabled, you must have executed pip install pyarrow equal to equal to 0 0.8.0 on your anaconda command prompt on this particular conda environment. So you can see that now depending upon the program name sklearn linear regression uh, you got this particular spark context that's available. I am keeping less memory in this case. 
Next, we are going to read it directly as a Spark data frame. And this is what I mentioned to you earlier that since you are giving the compressed format from that particular directory, there are two files, so it will create two partitions which you can see by printing the number of partitions out so that you can you can double check that whether your assumption of creating two parallel uh, execution is happening or not so here it is two and this is the reason so if suppose you are having a very big file if you are able to compress it into let's say 10 compressed formats then you are ensuring that your spark cluster is going to execute 10 times the parallel execution or the worker threads basically next comes the beautiful approach of converting your uh, spark data frame into pandas and applying the regular algorithms that you have used in your code so if you look there is a function and we are annotating that this particular function is a pandas udf and uh, we are calling that okay train this particular uh, udf take all the column values first create a data frame which is using pandas so we are using the pandas data frame remember the spark data frame will get converted into pandas data frame through the arrow format so that it is highly efficient then we are telling that okay my model is the linear regression and then i am calling the fit on that particular model so that my training is happening once the training is happened then I am creating a naming convention. You can see that I am going to use a column name called name, which I have declared earlier that df1 is the name of the first data set, df2 is the name of the second data set. I am using that as my signature and then I am dumping that model that we have created into this particular directory in synthetic data folder. So what happens is that the models that are getting created by parallelly training the two different data sets. So what I'm showing you here is the model creation parallelly for two different data sets creating two different models. You can always create one model as well but this is to show you the parallel execution of model creation on a Spark cluster. And then we are going to predict a particular result on some of the on one of the training data and then we are going to get the result right so let's execute it and uh, let's see what's happening this is just a function nothing happens here and uh, we are going to execute it in this particular cell please remember that in spark if you are not calling an action these are all transformations if you are not calling an action, then the Spark cluster will not be executing that particular, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the transformation. Every transformation that you write in Spark should have an action. And only when Spark sees an action, the transformation will happen. Otherwise, the transformation will never be executed. So let's execute that, right? And now what is happening is a very complex process on your Spark cluster where a parallelism is happening and it is writing the models into this particular directory and it is predicting and we are getting the result back. So let's see whether the models were written or not. Again, go back to the directory where we have seen the files earlier and if you look at the directory now, you will see that now you have got the models in the job lib format, which is nothing but the pickle file. You can load back that particular model and then you can look at the coefficients to see how accurate it is. So if I run this and if I take the model coefficient and the next one model coefficient, remember we added a 2.5 noise for the DF1 and a noise of 3 for the second model, second data set. That is why you are seeing here almost 2.5, of course, is a little bit higher and then here it is near to 3 
which proves that of course that is the coefficient or the noise that we have added now go back to the spark cluster and then let us look at the execution now you can see that the code is now running because we have not terminated the kernel and if you click on that particular one you will see how many executors happened in the whole process right and uh, if you are looking at the finished executors and uh, sorry if you are looking at the application and looking at the worker and uh, if you are investigating what exactly happened in the cluster you will be seeing the timeline that is being used for this particular application so let's look into that you will see the completed jobs and if you look at the event timeline you will see that there were two parallel tasks and the completed jobs you can see how it got executed and uh, you can also look at the uh, DAG timeline which I am just searching if you look at the stages and then you can see the DAGs that are getting executed and uh, where uh, DAG is nothing but the director cyclic graph where you will be reading the data each uh, partition by once and then executing it in multiple stages so look at the number of stages two here for two different data sets and finally it is counting the data remember the action that we have performed after the transformation so that gives a brief idea of how we can use spark for model training on windows now all you need to do is just going back to your code and once everything is successful you can just change it into a big cluster if the data is more another very important thing to note here where did i write this particular models in my local directory assume that when you are changing this to a cluster which is not your local machine if you write a local directory it is not going to work why because your spark cluster is working remotely right how can that remote cluster write the data into your local directory this works why because we are executing it on the local machine and this is where clearly you need to understand the the power of distributed computing when it is executed on a remote cluster so if it is a remote cluster make sure that this directory that you are specifying is a shared directory on that particular cluster so that every worker can write the result back otherwise you will not be able to see it for example if i just remove it and just type model udf dot joblib you will not be seeing this particular model udf in this particular directory and spark will be writing write directly onto the worker nodes so that is very important things uh, important thing to note right and now there is a, a, a bit of discussion happening and this is for the future and it is not yet fully matured so if you just to copy that url which is there in the code and paste it here and if you are seeing that there is some um, action going on in order to make this job lib to submit a spark job very easily but there are some limitations as it is currently not supporting model engineering model inference feature engineering etc in parallel and i think for registering this particular spark you will have to write all the code that we have written so far and maybe a little bit complex as well so we can wait till this is getting a little bit stable by because a lot of activities are going on in this particular job lib to 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 submit a job to uh, a, a spark cluster very easily but making sure that you are writing into the correct location making sure that your distributed uh, architecture is working perfectly will all be our responsibility right so this is how you will be using on windows 
a model training for a library that is written already in Python and then port it onto a Spark cluster. So two approaches. One, write the plain vanilla Spark without using any scikit-learn or any Python libraries. Use all the ML libraries provided by Spark by Spark.ml package or use your algorithm and then port it into a pandas udf with apache arrow enabled this is one of the most advanced and most prominent method currently getting or gaining importance in the industry thanks for listening